The solar pond and stream is pretty much done. In this video I want to show you how the solar is connected, the plants I'm using in and around the stream and the pond, and some of the challenges or mistakes that I needed to address. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So before this project, I never set up a DIY solar system and I was a little bit nervous. It actually wasn't that hard and I think if I can do it, anyone can. So powering the system is a 160 watt panel and it's secured up here on this arbor. I ran the wires through some old pipe I had laying around just to protect it when I'm cutting the trackless sternum that covers the arbor. I have a UV stabilised storage tub housing the battery and the solar control panel. I put some red tape on the positive wires so I know what goes where if I need to pull it apart thanks to the subscriber that made that suggestion. Setting up the battery to the controller and panel is straightforward and I showed that in the previous video um, so I'll put a link to that in the description. The interesting part was configuring the controller to shut off at certain times to protect the battery. The controller has a built-in timer but that only allows you to set how many hours after nightfall that you want the load, in this case a pump, to run. Well, I don't want it to run at night, I only want it to run during the day. The controller has a setting that will turn the load off, which is the pump, when the battery gets to a certain voltage. This is to prolong the life of the battery. I'm using a lithium battery uh, a life P04 and these things don't seem to drop their voltage like normal batteries. This chart shows how the voltage drops as the battery consumes energy. You can see it drops almost like hardly anything until it's almost completely depleted. So on the chart we can see that when the battery is 90% charged it reads 13.3 volts. Now, as soon as the load's running, that will instantly drop 0.3 volts, so down to about 13 volts. And then if you turn the load off, the battery will again read 13.3 volts. So what I've decided, whether right or wrong, is to set it so that the load will turn off when the controller reads 12.7 volts. So on the chart, that would mean that the battery is somewhere between 1% and 10%. But I believe it's really at 13 volts because that's what the controller reads as soon as the pump shuts off. So if we look at the chart, 13 volts is 30% battery capacity. So what I've done is I have the battery set to come back on when the controller reads 13.3 volts or 90% capacity. So I'm hoping I'm correct and I'm sort of running the battery from 30% capacity up to 90% capacity. It's winter here at the moment and it only runs for a few hours a day. Obviously it'll run longer the more sun you get. I could also place the solar panel on an angle so that it can better capture the low winter sun, but I like how it's hidden in the arbor and I like not being able to see it. I could also use a larger panel or multiple panels but at the moment I'm happy with a few hours in winter. During summer I expect it to run the entire day, but we'll see. So before I move on to the problems I had with the filter, I'll just run through the settings on the controller for anyone that's interested. I know this was something that was worrying me, and so far I haven't had any issues, although it's early days. If you're watching this in months after the vid is published, <laughs> ask me if I still have a house. So this is the home screen and it's telling me that the panel is charging, the battery is at 12.7 volts and the load is turned on. One click of the menu button and I can see the voltage that the solar panel is charging the battery at. 
Another click shows me what voltage the load, in this case the pump, will turn on. That means the battery needs to be at this voltage or higher for the pump to actually run. Another click, and this shows me at what voltage the pump will turn off. So this is to stop the battery from discharging too much. The next click shows that the load can run for 24 hours, as long as it's in the voltage range I have set. This is the timer function. If you set this on 6 hours, it would run the load for 6 hours after nightfall. I'm guessing this is handy setting for people that are running outdoor lights, but it's no good for my application. The last setting is the battery type. I believe this is just a bunch of presets for all the different types of batteries that can be connected to the controller. Different batteries have different voltages that they need to charge at. <laughs> That's my very limited and basic understanding anyway. So all those settings are customizable by holding down the menu button. And once the numbers on the screen start to flash, you can adjust their values. Anyway, if you have some questions or you need to tell me that I've done something horribly wrong and I'm going to burn my house down, um, put it in the comment section, please. Okay, now a quick look at how the plumbing's configured. The pump sits down in the reservoir area and it's pumped up to the filter. The plumbing is within the liner and it's concealed by the rocks and over time the plants as well. I needed to extend the cord on the cheap pump I had. Uh, we just used a low volt lighting extension cable and having the connector allows me to easily unplug the pump if I need to conduct any maintenance. So here's the filter barrel with no media in it. For those that watched the earlier build videos, you'll remember I built this wonderful filter and filled it with aquaponic clay media. Well, the flow rate of the pump was too much and it just flung the media out everywhere. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of that debacle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill it up with some bio balls in a bag so that they don't go floating off down the stream. If you look closely, you'll see that I have a valve on that white piece of PVC pipe. That's so that I can adjust the flow of water that moves down the tributary stream on the right hand side. Basically I just teed off the plumbing from the main line. Uh, so if I close the valve more at the filter, more water will move down over on that side of the stream. But I only want to trickle over there. Uh, in that stream I want to have a heap of impatience. The main idea of that stream is to just water the impatience um, because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it. Anyway, I can't plant the impatience until spring. We do get frosts here and the frosts will just melt them. So other than the hiccup with the filter, the streams both do their job and transport water down into the small pooling area. Because I teed the tributary stream off the main line, it eliminated the need for a breather pipe to stop siphoning in the filter. I also had no need for the clean out port as now my media will sit in a bag and I can just easily remove that. So at the moment here's how it looks from up on the veranda. It just looks like a bunch of rock. But once the plants grow in it will look more like a garden with a little bit of rock and some moving water. For the plants I've used an assortment of heuchera in the foreground I like their different coloured foliage, plus their evergreen, so they'll give me colour all year round. Around the back edges of the bowl and inside the stream, I'm trialling different types of ferns. I've added in a justicia over near the battery box. Here I have a strobilanthus and a plectranthus, uh, just a bit behind the main stream. I also peppered in some cyclamens for winter colour and in summer I'll have the impatience inside the stream. I added in some tassel cord rush inside the liner, some bacopa and ferns in the basin area and I think some milfoil as well. Here's a photo of all the new plants that I purchased, more so for my records than your interest. 
uh, anything that's not in the photo uh, I would have got from the gardens already or from down in the nursery. It doesn't look very full at the moment, but I like to take my time with the gardens. If things fill in and grow too quickly, it just means more maintenance for me in the future. I might have mentioned I'm lazy, and I prefer to watch it grow than cut it back. Anyway, so that's where I'm at at the moment. In spring, I'll add some more plants and rice fish to the bowl up in the top of the tributary stream. Uh, when the weather warms up a bit, I'll throw some shrimp in the pooling area. I'll also add a bit more moss and maybe some more plants in the basin area. And hopefully the next time I do an update, it looks better. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.